Hey everyone, Guillaume here, CEO of Optio, and today I want to chat a little bit about our latest feature, Ngram Finder. So here's what I'm looking to cover in about 10-ish minutes. Before we jump into the tool, I want to look at what we're calling the era of exclusions, which is an important macro trend in Google Ads and useful context for all of this. Then we're going to jump in. I'm going to show you Ngram Finder for search campaigns. I'm going to cover a couple of really neat data indicators that are built into the tool. And finally, we're going to look at Ngram Finder for Performance Max, which is something we're really excited about. So let's get going. So here we're looking at uh, a guide that we wrote called Cost Saving Tactics inside of Glossary, a really useful resource. And there's one bit in particular that I want to look at to illustrate. Here it is, Combat Match Type Loosening. So it's a big data analysis that we, that we did quite recently where we looked at 460 million impressions of exact match keywords across about 18,000 Google, Google Ads accounts. So, you know, it's quite, a, quite an extensive data set. And what we're seeing is that, say, 12-ish years ago, back in 2012, right over here, um, if you were to add an exact match keyword into Google Ads, your search terms that that exact match keyword would trigger uh, would exactly match the keyword. It did what it said on the tin. Um, and that has degraded over time and really accelerated about four years ago, say in 2020, where nowadays, come 2024, if you add an exact match keyword into Google Ads, you have about a one in two chance of the search terms that it triggers being exactly matching uh, that keyword. There are, sure, misspellings, uh, close variants and you know what I would argue are not so close variants in there so there's this real loosening of, of you know keyword matching controls and we're seeing the same thing in phrase match where nowadays it's you know less than a one in four chance of the search term uh, containing the phrase match string right and you know, AI at large is, is some really incredible and wonderful technology and, and can certainly drive results. I mean, broad match keywords are, you know, nowhere near where they were in terms of performance compared to, you know, just a few years ago. Smart bidding has gotten genuinely quite smart. Um, and that's all well and good, but I would argue that you still really need to put up some guardrails and still collaborate with the machine. It really is... Uh, human plus machine equals success. It's still by no means a set and forget type of system. So here it is, here's Ngram Finder. You can see that it's compatible with search campaigns, with shopping campaigns, with performance max that we're gonna cover very shortly. And here I am selecting two campaigns, two generic campaigns, I'm not mixing that with brand or competitor campaigns. And it's performed very quickly in Ngram analysis of all the search terms in those campaigns. Uh, I've got some handy filters here. So by default, we are not including stop words like the and of, um, and we're also stripping out data of search terms that are already blocked by negatives, uh, whether that's ad group, campaign, shared set, account level negatives, all of that is being taken into consideration. And we're showing you a very forward looking view um, of the world, i.e search terms and engrams that are going to continue spending into the future. Um, and by default, we can see that engrams are here sorted by end score. And what end score is, is a combination of cost weighting and performance difference. So here, for example, the engram automation has a reasonable amount of spend and its ROAS is 137%, which is significantly lower, 53% lower uh, than these two generic campaigns. So it's one to look into. So let me scroll down and find one. So let me pick on checklist here. I'll explain the little pulsing red dot in a moment. Um, and I'm going to click view search terms to look at its underlying search terms. And I can see that indeed some of these search terms are uh, really quite generic, like PPC checklist, you know, as a Google Ads automation tool, it's probably too generic, right? So what I can actually do here, say if checklist was strategic to my business, I can actually go in here and exclude individual search terms. So PPC audit checklist, maybe um, Google Ads audit checklist. Apparently we've had some conversion value, so I'll, you know, I'll let that keep running. 
Um, but you can see I can kind of prune uh, some of these search terms to improve the performance of search terms that contain the word checklist. Or I could go in here and just add checklist as a negative keyword. What I might do is just change this date range here to say a longer date range and make sure that over the longer term checklist really is still an underperformer. Yep, it definitely is. So here we've got checklist as a negative keyword loaded up and we have to, we can route this um, any number of ways, right? We can add it at the account level. Maybe we want to add it to a shared negative list or maybe we want to get granular and add it to at the campaign level or maybe even uh, at a number of ad groups and a campaign, we can you know mix and match and it's completely flexible. So now let me explain this little red pulsing dot, which is one of my favorite functionalities with this tool. You can see here there's a little insight that says this n-gram has a higher bounce rate than average, 40% for the n-gram versus 19% average, right? So this is really neat. What we've done here is we have Google Analytics for GA4 connected and we're running an n-gram analysis of search terms, Google ad search terms in GA4 and calculating the bounce rate for that n-gram and meshing it with Google ads data to show it in an insight here. So not only is the performance in this case not so good, but also the bounce rate is more than 2x the average, right? Which really signals that there's a disconnect um, somewhere. Maybe it's the landing page, maybe it's the ad, um, but users are, are not finding what um, what they're looking for. And so this can be really, really powerful, right? Because uh, n-grams have quite a long tail and it's often unreasonable to just wait longer to uh, accumulate the performance data to realize that, you know, essentially you're spending a bunch of money to realize, oh, you probably shouldn't have spent that money, right? So this is kind of a, a bit of a predictive indicator, an early indicator to tell you, mm, this traffic's maybe not so good and, and would probably be best reinvested elsewhere. I'll quickly show you a second type of indicator that, that's built in that's also really, really powerful. And you'll see it here. It says this n-gram performs three times worse than average across accounts in your industry, um, which I think is just really, really cool. What we've done here is we've done an n-gram analysis across the hundreds and hundreds of thousands uh, of Google Ads accounts that we have and we've looked at the relative performance of n-grams and uh, using some, some pretty cool technology, we're able to, to kind of predict the performance. So in this case, it happens to be quite a high volume n-gram where indeed, you know, we're looking at a CPA that's 4x uh, the average, but not only that, we're saying, hey, in other accounts very similar to yours, uh, this n-gram performs poorly. And it's just another way to kind of mine that long tail um, and make some decisions, another data point. And finally, I want to cover n-gram for Performance Max, um, which we're really, really excited about. So getting a hold of this data already is uh, challenging to say the least. Uh, Google doesn't make it easy. And interestingly, Google's left out cost data for Performance Max search terms. So we've had to do something a little different here. Uh, where we're looking at conversions per melee or, or conversions per thousand impressions. So what we can see here is when uh, a performance max n-gram has a lot of impressions and very few conversions, um, it's going to give you a very low CPM score. And we're again comparing that versus average and cost weighting that. Um, and we found all sorts of inefficient spend in here uh, across our agencies and in-house teams. So this is really, really powerful. So I haven't covered some of the other little bits like uh, looking at say the change history where you can see various users using this tool and what they've done or kind of the CSV downloads that are, that are very thorough. So hopefully that gives you a good view of what Ngram Finder can do. I'm really excited to get you trying it in your accounts. And as always, if there's anything we can do, just please don't hesitate to get in touch.